Years ago, before I was married, I rented a great big house that had like four bedrooms in it. I didn't need four bedrooms, and so I utilized them for different things. For example, I used one of them to store and dry my stinky hockey equipment. After every game, I'd come home and drag the stuff upstairs and spread it around that bedroom and let it dry before the next game. And you'd often have to close the door just to make sure the rest of the house didn't smell like that, but it worked fine. That is until I got married. Then for some reason, Sarah didn't want me storing all my stinky hockey equipment in the spare bedroom. So I welded together a steel frame that I keep in my garage and I often dry my hockey equipment on that. And it works really well because you can hang things on it and then the air gets around them and they dry off a lot quicker. It's great to have a frame on which to hang things. This Sunday sermon is exactly that. We are in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7 through 11, and Peter has some really good things to say in here, um, but we're, what we're going to do is use those really good things as jumping off points or as a framework on which to hang a bunch of other thoughts, and we're going to talk about the fact that time is coming to a close. Peter starts this passage by saying the end is near, and because the end is near, he suggests there are some things that we ought to do. And, and I just finished writing this lesson, and I really like it. I think it's a lesson about our priorities and what's really important and making sure we hang the right things in the right place. The sermon is called, Time is Short, Thoughts on How to Spend Our Days Well. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7 through 11, you can go read that and see if you can figure out the framework and what we're going to be talking about. Again, I think this is a really practical lesson, and again, one that would be great to bring someone to if you're thinking of inviting friends. I think they would get a lot out of it. In our Bible study, we are moving on from 2 Samuel. We are now going to be in 1 Kings. And uh, we're going to start moving a little quicker. We're not just going to go verse by verse, even chapter by chapter. We're going to go chunk by chunk. And so this week, the chunks we are going to look at will be found in 1 Kings chapters 1 through 3. Now, of course, we're not reading all of that. We're just going to take selected parts. So if you like reading ahead and having all the context, uh, 1 Kings chapters 1 through 3 is where we are. And, and the story here... Um, is, is coming from the end of David's life. Uh, he has been the king for 40 years, and now there's a transition of power. Uh, there's a new king. But again, as has been the case before, when uh, the kingship is up for grabs, there's a battle for power, and the transition isn't very smooth. Uh, David does some very good things in, in this troubled time, and so we can learn from those good things that he does. Uh, Solomon comes along and actually becomes the next king, and that's according to God's will, so that's really good. But also Solomon does a couple of things in these chapters that look really benign at the moment, but will lead to problems later on. So if you like reading ahead and being a sleuth and trying to figure out what we're going to talk about, those are some of the themes we're going to look for. David's good, godly guidance, and Solomon's already um, missteps as he begins with the kingship. The, the Bible study is going to be called A Transition of Power, 1 Kings chapters 1 through 3. Um, as I look out the window here, I can see the, the truck from Regina that uh, takes clothes up and donates them and, and gives money to the Diabetes Association. Uh, we just loaded 228 bags, I think. So, so clothing comes in all the time, but once in a while we get to bless others with it and Others will get to use those clothes, and the, and the money raised from it will help other people, and so that's really nice. Uh, if you had any part in uh, hauling clothes downstairs or hauling them back up to meet this truck, thank you for doing that. That's really great. Um, people are still generous all the time. Stuff comes in all the time, and lots of people are coming on Tuesday nights to get things. So, again, share the word. The clothing outlet is open on the first and third Tuesday of each month, so... Let people know that we've got lots of things to give away yet, even though we passed a lot on as well. I'll remind you that, there, that our lunches are done, our noon lunches have ceased, so there is no noon lunch at the building for now. 
Uh, we have a couple of special things coming up over the next uh, weeks, and so we'll announce those as we go, but um, maybe use this as an opportunity to invite someone out for lunch, or at home for lunch, or who knows what, if you like. Um, again, I am I am really excited about the sermon this week in particular. I think it's going to be really good. Again, it's been helpful for me. Maybe it'll be helpful for you too. Why don't you come and see? Sunday morning. We'll see you there.